Welcome back. Throughout this week, we've been talking about receiving God's guidance. And yesterday we talked more specifically about getting a rhema and how that fits with God's guidance. And today we're going to be talking about how do we test if that's actually a word from God or if it's a word from another source. So there are nine different litmus tests that we can apply to a word from God to see if it actually is from him and what we should do with it. The very first one is, does the word conflict or come against any other biblical principles? Are there any principles? that we may see in the Bible that would be compromised by us following this word because God will never contradict his word. He will never speak against what he has already spoken in his scriptures. So make sure you spend some time and test it against the word of God in scripture. Second of all, assess the tone of voice in which God is speaking to you with, because God's tone will not conflict with his character. Yes, there are definitely times in which God is upset with our sin and he calls us to repent, but also knowing that God wants to see us flourish and he wants to see us go forward with the greatest sense of of, of his life in us, the tone of his voice is going to impact that. There was a time in which I was feeling very blocked up by uh, in my spirit and, and I couldn't hear from God and I was so frustrated and just, just trying to figure what can I do? And, and so what I did was I'm like, well, I've, I've seen it happen in scripture where you, where you anoint something with oil and you pray over that space. And, and so I did that. And, and the response that I got from the voice of God was one of anger and frustration that God was just angry with me that what, why was I putting on and imposing things onto him that he never specifically asked me to do? And I immediately felt guilt and shame within my soul and my spirit that I had offended God, that I'd gone forward and done something in my own will and I had not listened to him. And then a friend of mine helped me walk through that journey and saying, what was the desire of your heart? Was the desire of your heart to advance your own kingdom? He goes, from what you've told me, no, you wanted to understand God more. He says, you didn't hear the voice of God. You heard the voice of a demonic spirit that was upset that you were bringing in the full presence of God. And so the tone of voice was one of the key factors that my friend highlighted for me. He said, it was a voice of anger. An anger that was undue based on a person who's seeking the Lord and still having a hard time finding him. And that's when I realized, whoa, I really have to discern the voices that I'm hearing inside of my head if they are from God or if they are from the enemy. And, And that was a really catalytic point within my life because that voice, that demonic style voice showed up in a number of different places and I was able then to appropriately identify and kind of going, that's not the word of, that's not the voice of my loving Lord and Savior. That's another voice that's coming in. So make sure you take some time and assess the tone of voice that is speaking to you. A third element is, is the word repeated? Is it something that just kind of comes in your mind and just goes and is gone? You kind of go, oh, I forget what that was. Or does it have some sticking power where it kind of is like an earworm? It gets inside of your head and it won't let go. Because the nature of who God is, is he wants to repeat something. He wants us to be able to hear it and so that we will catch it and grasp it. Now, to be clear on that, God won't give you an earworm if you kind of hear something go, well, I don't like that and you try and shove it away, then we'll go, okay, I'll let you shove that away. But if you're earnestly trying to to decipher and discern, is this from God? He will allow that to stick and repeat itself in your mind as a way of confirming and affirming that yes, this is from him. Fourth, ask for confirmation. Gideon did this, right? Gideon, he laid out a fleece trying to figure out, is God calling me to go into battle? And he he just really wanted to be sure. And I've heard sermons on that saying that, well, Gideon was actually acting in disobedience and not faith. I don't think so. I'm pretty sure that Gideon was acting in wisdom, that he wasn't going to be so quick to go, oh, I heard the voice of God say, so therefore I'm going to go do. He goes, I think I heard the voice and I want to know for sure. So show me, show me something that's really, really clear. And and so Gideon lay forward a really helpful fleece test in which uh, soaking wet one day, bone dry the next day, in which you, you know the weather conditions will never change that drastically between one day and the next day. The, the diametrically opposed responses of that fleece were a really helpful way to test, is this God who's speaking to me? And to that end, we also have freedom in which we can ask God, confirm this in me. Help me to see a, a clear sign that this actually is your voice I'm hearing. The fifth way may just be the strength within your own spirit that God is reassuring and firming up in you that, yes, this is what God is saying. And and I can't really uh, even describe what that's like uh, other than going, I I just knew within my gut, I need to act on this right now. Because sometimes things uh, will not be able to have a significant period of time to test stuff. So like if you're walking down the street and you sense God say, go talk to that person over there. Do you really have time to seek counsel? Do you really have time to, to, to weigh things out? You don't. That's where God gives us that strong sense within our gut. 
go, go talk to that person now. The sixth way is receiving wise counsel from others in which other people will be able to say something to you which will powerfully confirm what God's will is. And, and this has happened in my life a number of times in which people were not aware of what I was praying for or what I was wrestling with. And yet God would use conversations that I had with people to bring up precisely what I was wrestling through. I remember struggling when I was in my teen years about which denomination I should go into ministry with. I was born and raised Christian Reformed, but my faith really came to life uh, in the Pentecostal church when I was hanging out with some Pentecostal friends. And I was at a Pentecostal youth rally, uh, I, kind of the culmination of me wrestling with God, what dom- denomination should I go into? Both are denominations that seek your face. Both are denominations that have, have their strengths and their weaknesses. Where would you have me land? And I had not shared this struggle with anyone. Uh, and I was at this Pentecostal youth rally in which they all they called everyone who sensed that God was calling them to the ministry to come forward and to be prayed over. So I went forward to be prayed over and, and they had more people come forward than they anticipated. So then they said, if you have a friend or someone that you know that's up here, come and you pray over them and uh, and just speak the words that God's saying to you to speak to them. And I remember my friend, my, my friend Tom came and he prayed over me. And I had not once told Tom what I was journeying with. And clear as a bell in that prayer, Tom prayed, Heavenly Father, I thank you that you have called Ryan to stay within his denomination, that you are calling him to do specific things within the Christian Reformed Church. May he be faithful to this calling. And I remember just sitting there with uh, down on my hands and my knees kind of going, God, did you just make my buddy Tom say that to me? And it was one of those things, what, did I ever talk with Tom about this? And, and no. And, and as I was driving home later on that evening, I'm like, hey, Tom, you said some stuff. He goes, yeah, I don't even remember what I said. And I said, well, this is what you said. He goes, huh. Cool. I just prayed kind of what, uh, what I sensed God was saying to me. He goes, and you were wrestling with that? Well, praise God. Now you know what God's told you to do. And that is a way that we can allow God to speak to us through a clear, audible voice through a fellow brother or sister in Christ. The eighth test is kind of like a compilation of all of these tests coming together, seeing if there's confirmation from multiple sources that God is saying and directing everything in a certain direction. Now, I have cautioned a number of times, don't just take one of these, uh, one of these elements and run forward with it. Um, And number eight is really highlighting that, that if you're getting a word from someone else, if you're seeing affirmations of it in scripture and it doesn't conflict, conflict with scripture, the tone of voice is all in order that you have a community of the saints saying these things. If all this stuff is starting to come together, when you see those multitude of voices, write those things down and just really highlight that. So that way with conviction in your mind, you know that God's speaking to you. And the ninth one is the power of receiving a word while in prayer. Prayer really should be, and most of the time is, just a direct connection with you and your God in heaven. It, it's a place where hopefully uh, the Holy Spirit will press away any demonic voices or even any voices of the flesh and allow your spirit to communicate directly with God. So pay special attention to inclinations and feelings that you get while you are praying, because in those times of prayer is where God is developing his relationship with you and, and growing your trust in him. So I invite you, as I've gone through those nine different things, take one or two moments just to to write down something that stood out to you. And if you can, probably open up the notes on this one and write down the nine different ways that you can test if the word is from God. Now let's make this practical for right here, right now. The vast majority of us have decisions that we have to make, and a number of decisions may be significant at this point in time. So spend some time thinking about a decision that you have to make or have just made, and write it out in some specific detail, trying to figure out, okay, so what are the elements involved in this? And then once you've written that down in specific detail, lay it before God and to ask Him, what would you say to me about this? What places should I be listening to your voice on this? And filter that through these nine different tests that we talked about today. Finally, as we wrap up, read through Matthew 16, verses 13 through 20. Practice the spiritual disciplines as you work through that passage. God bless you and have a great day.